In these set of videos, we will try to understand what is cross product. Now, this is the very first one on cross product and let's review what do we know about kind of products we are doing with vectors. So, you learn about scalar multiple, right? Scalar multiple. This was multiplying by a scalar, scalar quantity, let's say k, and the vector is, let's say u. Then scalar multiple gives you a collinear vector of different magnitude. And it also can reverse the direction. So the scalar multiples have two effects. One, the magnitude can be changed and the direction can be reversed or it makes collinear vectors basically. And then we learned about dot product. In dot product we learn that dot product of any two vectors is actually a scalar. And we can write u dot v as vector u magnitude times vector v cos of theta where theta is angle between them. So but it is you know a scalar quantity u v magnitudes are scalar and cos theta will give you a number right between minus 1 to plus 1 and we found that u dot v was very good in the applications where you have to prove that the vectors are perpendicular since cos theta is 90 degrees it gives you zero value so perpendicular vectors I should say non-zero perpendicular vectors will give dot product as zero right and also you can find the magnitude of product if you do u dot v that means same vector then cos theta will be zero and you get magnitude square right so those were huge applications for dot product and we did work done which is an application for dot product f dot d where force dot product with distance displacement I should say yields work done now we are talking about cross product now dot product yields scalar quantities cross product on the other hand results into vector quantities and cross product is written as u v sine theta right but that's the magnitude part and along with this it has a direction so we are putting normal and I am at present putting a direction unit vector which is normal to both u and v so cross product gives you a vector which is perpendicular to both the vectors so that's the beauty of cross product and it finds huge applications um, and like force torque torque is a good application if you apply a force for example if you're applying with a wrench if you move it then you'll find that the bolt moves in vertical direction so what we realize here is in cross product that it is involving three dimensions so cross product is always in 3d or I should say R3 space so this is what is very unique about cross product you cannot do cross product in 2d the other two which we have talked about scalar multiple and dot product can be done in 2d but not cross product so cross product is kind of unique that it can be done only in 3d or r3 since the resultant of this is always a vector which is normal to the plane of the other two so you need the third plane third dimension right so that's how it is and to give you an idea about this magnitude and direction part very good example here is finding area of a parallelogram let's say we have a parallelogram here and its sides be u and v vectors right let's say this is u and that is v and we form a parallelogram then if you want to find area of this parallelogram what do you do let's say this angle is theta then that's the height 
then area of a parallelogram is equals to magnitude of base which is vector u times height now what is height I can write height in terms of vector v the hypotenuse this is right angles so it is magnitude of u which is the base and height is since this is opposite to angle theta and that's the hypotenuse height can be written as v sine theta now u v sine theta you can see is this part right this is what u v sine theta is so basically area of a parallelogram represents magnitude of cross product gives gives us an idea of how much is the magnitude of this product right so so area of it, that is a good application so area is the dimension or the magnitude of cross product and as i said the direction of cross product will be normal to this so basically if i am trying to say vector u cross vector v then i am saying it is it can be represented by an arrow so let me draw an arrow now let's say this is my arrow right so it can be represented by an arrow whose length is equals to area of this parallelogram i think you get the concept the length that means the magnitude of u cross v is actually equals to area of let me write parallelogram as this area of parallelogram the length and the direction is normal to the plane of u and v as if it is shooting out of this page towards you right with well, the magnitude of area of this bigger the vectors i mean maybe in the same direction more the magnitude but the direction is unique is coming out and that is the normal to the page right so that is how it is what we also learn here is that if you actually see any two vectors on a plane then there will be infinite number of vectors normal to them right every vector which is coming out of this page will be normal to both these vectors right but by cross product we get a unique vector i should say unique unit vector which is normal to both right so that is another way of saying it now deciding whether it's going to come out or come down is kind of critical right so what do we do with that so for finding this we have a parameter and we use right hand rule we use right hand rule to decide the direction that is if you curl your fingers from u to v if you curl your fingers from u to v then your thumb is going to point towards the direction of vector so in this case if you put your right hand it will be like thumbs up position so vector is shooting out but if you do v cross u it will be like thumb will be pointing downwards so you can see the magnitude remains same magnitude is same as that parallelogram on the page but the direction reverses it now moves downwards right so if i do v cross u i mean if this is my vector v and u i'm not doing the complete diagram but the magnitude will be same as this parallelogram and i can show my arrow going down with this plus sign so plus sign for me will denote a of arrow shooting downwards a unit vector so the direction changes and therefore we realize that in vectors when we do cross product then they are not commutative in fact in vectors when we do cross product then u cross v is actually equals to minus of v cross u so remember that they are not commutative when we are talking about cross product they are commutative 
when we are talking about dot product, right? Here they are not. Since the direction reverses, the magnitude may remain same. So critical things which we learned here is one that cross product is not commutative. Very important for me to highlight right in the very beginning. Since when we talk about products, we take it for granted that they should be commutative, right? But they are not in cross product of vectors. And second, what we get with cross product is a unique unit vector, which is like common to both. If we are talking about unique vector, then it is a unit vector which is perpendicular to both, right? In general, when we are doing cross product, we give a quantity which could be a scalar multiple of this. But when we talk about unit vector, then that is unique. So when we do u cross v, we get a unique unit vector whose magnitude is u v cos theta and the direction is given by the right hand rule and let me highlight this part now the right hand rule keep in keep that in mind and now in the coming videos we will explore this concept of geometric representation of cross product and move on to see how to calculate cross product with different processes and how to apply it in many problems to solve i hope you'll enjoy this journey Thank you and all the best.